We're joined by Stuart Miller, Lennar Executive Chairman. Uh, Stuart, I'm going to kick it off here. Why did you do so well? How is housing demand so strong when all we hear about is how affordability is way too high? Okay, so let, let's remember, let's go back a year and remember that the home builders as a group, Lennar as well, uh, really took a big step backwards, both on margin and on volume, uh, when, that, when the Fed started raising quite aggressively uh, about a year ago. And so the, the pain that was felt in the home building world uh, dates back a year. We've been going through it and sorting through it over the past year. Secondly, I note <clears throat> that there's, there is a well-documented supply shortage of housing. It is 15 years in the making. We've been underproducing the housing that is needed in the country for over 15 years since the Great Recession. Um, and that's not going to fix itself quickly. And so there's been a reconciliation. Um, the consumer has had to go through an adjustment. It started with, uh, with sticker shock and migrated to affordability. Um, over the past year, there's been a reconciliation in pricing. There have been uh, interest rate buy-downs that have been initiated by the industry. Uh, and while the existing home market has continued to suffer, in part because there's no inventory, people with low interest rate mortgages don't want to uh, put their homes for sale, um, and in part uh, because there's been that reconcil yeah. reconciliation with the customer, um, uh, we're now seeing demand come back to the market, come back to the market and fulfill need within the country, and pricing and interest rate buy-downs have enabled that. Well, Stuart, look, I'm looking at the bank rate 30-year fixed rate. It's at 7.1% today. What gets consumers to give up the 3% that they have on their existing home? Uh, or is this all new demand from new buyers of homes? Yeah, I, th I think that those that have that 3%, 4% mortgage are going to be very reluctant to give up that interest rate. They have equity in their home. They have equity in their mortgage. Uh, so this is new demand. This is a lot of the unraveling of doubling up people that have lived at home for an ex uh, uh, with their parents uh, for an extended period of time coming to market. Household formation remains strong. Uh, yep. So this is this is just the market revealing the underlying demand that has been on hold for the past year. Stuart, okay, let's talk a little bit about how we build more houses. How does America build more houses? What do you need to have happen to build more houses? Are you constrained by labor, by lumber prices? What is going on and what has been going on for so long that, that is basically preventing America building the houses that it needs? And how would you solve the problem? So this is exactly the question that is confronting mayors and governors across the country right now. Uh, the recognition that it is, as, is especially affordable workforce housing that is in short supply. Um, and it derives in part from land availability. And when I say land, uh, when you fly in a plane, you see land available across the country. It's entitled land that's ready to be developed and to be put into production. Uh, there is a shortage of land. Land developers are finding it hard to get access to capital. Uh, so. Uh, land prices have been moving up because of short supply. Um, uh, production prices have generally moved up, although moderated over the past year. And we've seen production costs, the costs of sticks and bricks, start to moderate and come down. Um, and so you have a math problem, and that is it's expensive to build, expensive to buy land, expensive to build, uh, and very difficult to make homes affordable. What so do we have to do to solve the problem? We're going to have to get more land available at shorter, uh, shorter entitlement times with lower fees to bring costs down, and we're going to have to see some more reconciliation in the cost of production. Uh, over time, I think we can make this happen, but it is going to take somewhat of a partnership uh, with uh, the private sector and public uh, enterprise. Well, but this is supply-demand story, Stuart. It hasn't been playing the major role with house prices recently. Have we hit the bottom in terms of home prices? Are we're going to start seeing them rise towards the end of this year? Well, some of the answer to that question is going to be market and interest rate dependent. We'll see what comes around the corner. Uh, but what we've said is that we think that, that home prices have come down about 10%. Uh, they're probably going to remain right there, at least for the foreseeable future. 
Um, of course, if interest rates aggressively or even moderately start ticking up, that might affect those prices. Uh, but I think there's basic stability in pricing, and um, and I think that uh, I think we're not going to see uh, the supply shortage start to peak up the pricing of housing again anytime soon. Affordability is a limiting factor. Stuart, how are your costs? Labor, lumber, sticks and bricks, as you called it? Yeah, so starting a year ago, as we saw our prices come down, we took the first hit to margin. But then we started to sit down with our building partners and our land partners, for that matter. And we started to build partnership to say, OK, our margins are coming down. We've got to work together to bring the cost of labor, the cost of materials down. And we've done that constructively over the past year. So our costs have come down. Um, and uh, and that has been an offset to the hit to margin. And that's why you're starting to see some recovery in our margin. Part of it is land. Part of it is uh, labor and materials. And we'll continue to see that flow through over the next quarters. You know, I know you've been really aggressive about incentives and cost cutting to make sure that uh, people can still f afford your homes. How do you see that playing out over the next couple of quarters? Are you going to still have to remain quite as aggressive as you've been? Well, let's not use the word aggressive. I think we've been constructive. I think we recognize that there's a housing shortage, and our, our job is to continue to produce homes to make up for the shortage and to build the products the dwellings that America needs. Uh, at the same time, we have joined hands with our land partners and our production partners, our, our, our building partners, to say, we're all in this together. Let's keep volume moving forward. We have to fill a void. And if we do it together, we can maintain production levels and profitability letters, levels that are not what they used to be, but are acceptable in order to make sure that we have affordable homes for America.